When it comes to the trillions of microorganisms living within, we often oversimplify their classification as either good or bad, beneficial or nefarious, vibe boosting or vibe killing. I could go on, but I think you get the point. However, this simplistic characterization misses one big critical point. A point that turns all microbes, especially in the gut, bad real fast. Grab your toilet paper of choice because we've got another microbiome deep dive on the docket. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are geeking out with our gut microbes once again, discussing why the integrity of the gut wall may very well be the secret sauce for getting the most out of our symbiotic relationship with these intestinal crawlers and how said integrity is not only very much in your control, but also lies at the foundation of whether you are heading down the path of vitality over time or disease, dysfunction, and morbidity. I know, shit got real fast. And that's not only because microbes are kind of part of that shit, never mind. And the sad truth is, the latter seems to be much more prevalent in this day and age. But don't worry too much, because we're going to touch on a few ways, like we always do, to write that ship. Including by reviewing some new, hot off the scientific streets research, displaying how food can modulate our microbes and thus our gut wall in a beneficial way. Promoting cellular efficiency as a byproduct and that aforementioned vitality thing. Because, as we know, it's all connected. So let's begin by exploring this little known fact about the bacteria and microbes within. And it's the fact that your body doesn't like them. Mm -mm. Meaning, they become a big problem if they escape the realm of the intestinal tract. Because remember, they are in fact non-cell organisms, whether researchers classify them as good, bad, or indifferent. And we have an entire biological military complex built to identify and destroy non-self stuff, your immune system, if you were wondering. So when microbes sneak their way into the hottest club in your biological town, club circulation, a military-grade inflammatory response takes place to neutralize and take out the threat. This is what we call inflammation. And if you've been around these parts, you know that we nickname its chronic presence longevity liability numero uno, because the immune response, especially the initial one, is nonspecific, meaning it attacks and destroys everything in the area. Kind of like running in circles with a flamethrower in hopes of wiping out the entire threat. However, as you can imagine, destroying healthy self cells in the process, which when you put two and two together, it doesn't make it a surprise that chronic inflammation has been associated with almost all diseases we modern intelligent walking apes face with implications of accelerating many of them. Yeah, not cool. You can see why we don't want much of this and thus want to prevent its antagonists. But Here's the thing. Our gut wall is comprised of millions of tightly junctioned epithelial cells. And sitting atop this intestinal border wall is a layer of mucus, which supports gut function in many different ways. One of the most important being acting as a buffer between the trillions of non-self organisms which call our gut home and our self gut cells, along with the bloodstream and every other area of the body, essentially, behind it. Now, when things are operating as they should, this buffer allows nutrients and metabolites to pass through while keeping those bacteria and microbes at bay and in their place. However, if this mucus layer gets depleted, a very common byproduct of the modern day Western lifestyle, you know, the ultra-processed 24-7 eating, the indoor sedentary behavior, chemicals and pharmaceuticals galore, and chronically deprived disaligned sleep, 
microbes, beneficial or not, begin to make direct contact with the gut wall, inducing inflammation and eventually, if not fixed, a loosening of these tight cellular junctions and the creation of a back door into club circulation, a condition known as leaky gut. And this back door not only opens up a path for bacteria to get in, but also they're much harder to manage immune triggering byproducts. One of the most troubling being LPSs or lipopolysaccharides. This is a bacterial component that plays a key role in their function and protection, but also one that detaches from a bacteria after its death, which is happening by the millions each day in your gut. Yep, you're a bacteria graveyard. Well, essentially, your toilet is. But we digress. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter if these LPSs come from so-called beneficial or nefarious bacteria either. Non-self is non-self. And it's the perfect storm of dysfunction which sets the stage for chronic systemic inflammation, and thus the ultimate trajectory down the less desired path of disease and dysfunction. Whew, life comes at you fast. I know. That being said, these microbes also have some pretty amazing revitalizing powers too. And all it takes to see and feel these effects is a little nurturing, helping them help you. Scratching their back and letting their tentacles of wisdom scratch yours. Whoa. Putting the gut wall promoting, beneficial metabolite producing communities in a position to thrive through your everyday habits, routines, and rituals. Something I like to call micro manipulation. Because let me tell you, they are most certainly manipulating you for their benefit. So you might as well return the favor. And we've talked about a ton of ways to do just this across all of the videos on the Microbiome 101 playlist. Because the fact is, our microbiome is always shifting as a byproduct of its environment. The food we eat, the movement we do, the sleep we get, the medications we take, the household items we use, and the nature we experience, all are factors constantly influencing the composition of your external and internal creepy crawlers. And generally speaking, the data to date suggests that more ultra-processed eating, sedentary behavior, antibiotic use, harsh cleaning supplies, time spent inside, and circadian disaligned deprived sleep is associated with a less diverse, health deteriorating, disease promoting ecosystem within while eating real whole foods, organic, grass-fed, wild, free-range with a healthy dose of fiber, staying active, getting a little dirty in nature, and prioritizing high-quality circadian-aligned nightly sleep does the exact opposite. One interesting example of how a lifestyle intervention improves gut health is the observation that intermittent fasting protocols can revitalize intestinal stem cells helping keep the gut wall primed and resilient. However, this is likely dwarfed in comparison to what probably is the most influencing factor of them all, the food we eat. Because if you haven't put two and two together, what we eat is in fact what they eat. And we've got a super interesting new study which helps paint this picture. Researchers out of the University of Laval sought to see how compounds from everyday food could modulate the microbiome in a beneficial way, exploring if it could even help prevent chronic conditions such as type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. To do this, the team recruited 40 healthy participants and had them consume a cranberry supplement twice daily, a dose which is equivalent to ingesting 60 grams of cranberries per day. And they chose cranberries because it had previously displayed some very interesting promise from its high content of polyphenols, composition of oleosaccharides, and small fibers. To assess the change, samples of plasma, urine, and stool were collected from the participants at the beginning of the study and four days later. All in all, relatively short experiment. So, what'd they find? Well, 
some interesting changes indeed. In only four days, the cranberry extract seemed to significantly alter gut bacteria. Increasing levels of a beneficial species called Bifobacterium, which has been known to produce beneficial short-chain fatty acids and be associated with a reduced risk in both diabetes and cardiometabolic diseases. However, the coolest part may have been the observed increase in a species called Acromensia municifila, which plays an important role in stimulating the production of the intestinal mucosa layer, and thus is key in reducing the risk of inflammation and promoting gut wall health and integrity. Pretty damn interesting if you ask me. Researchers were keen to point out that these effects are often observed after the consumption of prebiotic fibers, but in this case, they seem to be driven by phytonutrients and oligosaccharides. Now, this was a small study, and results did vary between participants depending on their baseline gut status. However, this is also another piece of evidence demonstrating how and why our everyday habits matter. Because as we know, when they're good, their cellular and metabolic effects tend to compound like interest in the longevity bank, promoting the mission statement of vitality over time. So it may be a productive exercise to self-reflect a little, ask yourself, or set a reminder on your phone, a note on your computer, or even fridge. I know we all like going there a lot saying, am I putting my gut microbes and gut wall in a position to thrive today? Is this decision that I'm about to make gonna help or do the opposite? Because it's simple. If the intestinal tract and those trillions of microbes ain't vibing, there's a good chance many other parts of the body aren't either. They do have their tentacles of wisdom in just about everything. So it only makes sense to start helping them help you already. And those smells that they let out, that's just them saying thank you. A lot of people don't know that.